Hi, boys and girls. I'm your Peter Pan storyteller. When you hear this sound, turn the page. Silverhawks, the origin, part one. A radio signal crackled across the interstellar void. It was coming from a space station called Hawk Haven on an asteroid near the galaxy of Limbo. Emergency transmission, galaxy of Limbo calling to Earth. The caller was the tough, one-eyed boss of Hawk Haven. Emergency transmission, this is Commander Stargazer to Earth. The commander's call was half metal, with telescopic sight. Commander Stargazer to Earth, do you read me? We copy Commander Stargazer. Begin emergency transmission. We have just had an intergalactic prison breakout on Penal Planet Ten. Isn't that where you imprisoned Monstar? Monstar has escaped. Your report, please, Commander Stargazer, in full detail. Okay, here's what happened. At 1300 Intergalactic Standard Time on the 40th day of the year 2839, a galaxy of limbo experienced a Moonstar burst. This time, the Moonstar's rays shone directly into the penal planet. You remember what those rays do to Monstar, don't you? The commander described how the hideous prisoner had battered his cell walls and rattled the bars in fury. The boys up there did everything they could to black out the place, but somehow those blasted rays penetrated Monstar's cell. As guards closed the shutters, the prisoner snarled, "Stop, you fool!" Let the moon star shine into my cell, and you will be rewarded with wealth beyond wealth. Forget it, Monstar. We know exactly what will happen if you ever see the moon star again. As the shutter clanged down, a loudspeaker began a warning countdown. Moon star burst minus sixteen. Monstar roared in frustration. Outside, the brilliant moon star was glowing ever more brightly. Its flaming rays glinted off the armored prison. No! Groaned Monstar. This may be my last chance. Moon star burst minus nine, minus seven. Moon star burst minus five. Monstar's huge fist pounded the shutter. And a single ray speared through the slats. Yes, yes, give me your power, your energy. Moon star burst minus two. Monstar fought desperately to rip open the slats. Moon star burst minus one. Each fresh ray seemed to increase his strength. Moon star burst and. Zero. As the weird orb flared into dazzling brilliance, the prisoner tore at the blackout barrier until the steel shutters hung in shreds. Now, at last, the master criminal stood exposed to the full blinding glare. Moon star of limbo. He chanted, "Give me the might, the muscle." The menace of Monstar. His transformation was complete. The rays had changed the bestial giant into a super powerful fiend, encased in armor. His right eye a fiery slash. His left eye a blaze of demonic energy. As he sliced through the prison walls, the guards rushed in, firing their weapons. But the laser beams glanced off Monstar harmlessly and ricocheted back at the guards. Nothing could stop him now. Stargazer, I'm free! Next moment, he was surging out and away from the penal planet. For a while, he soared exultantly through space. Then. His eyes caught a distant gleam of light. Gradually, it shaped itself into an enormous space squid with glowing tentacles. Skyrunner, old friend, it's me, your master. I miss you. 
shouted Monstar. The creature bore down on him, shooting out bolts of electricity. But Monstar rocketed easily out of harm's way and roared with laughter. You crawl wild! Forgot me! You need a little persuasion! Now it was Monstar's turn to attack. His eyes pulsed red, and the fiery burst shot out from the star-shaped eye. Skyrunner backed off in alarm and turned to flee. But the burst of light pursued it relentlessly. You cannot escape the light star! Sure enough, the fireball closed in and surrounded the huge space squid. As if by magic, it was transformed instantly into a fearsome jet craft. Monstar leaped aboard and gunned it into action. Together, we will terrorize the galaxy of Limbo. Continue transmission, Commander Stargazer. At 13.40, intergalactic standard time, Monstar, universal public enemy number one, return to the penal planet and free the group of the most dangerous criminals in this or any other galaxy. You getting all of this, or am I just talking to myself? Transmit visual material, please. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna show you the whole mob. Number one, Molecular. Master of disguise, he can assume any shape, any form. He is Monstar's undercover guy. The video screen showed how the weird creature could rearrange his bodily structure. The female, Melodia. Mistress of evil notes. <laughs> Her musical power has shattering consequences. Deadly silver laser beams flashed out whenever she pressed her synthesizer keys. Here is Mumbo Jumbo, the strong man of the mob. This bull-like robot, with fire-snorting nostrils and laser eyes, was the gang's most formidable brawler. Hardware, Monstar's weapons man. A high-tech gunsmith, he supplied the mob with awesome firepower. And Windhammer, the Storm Master, with that blaster tuning fork of his. The fork's vibrations could stir hurricane winds, jagged lightning bolts, and peals of thunder. Already, in fact, Hawkhaven itself was adrift in a violent galactic storm. And that's just for openers. Commander Stargazer to Earth, we could use some help up here. We could use some help up here. Back on Earth, plans were taking shape. A unique team would be formed and sent to the galaxy of Limbo to aid Commander Stargazer. At a top secret laboratory in the Arizona desert. Good morning, General. Morning, Professor. Data on our volunteers for the mission to Commander Stargazer. Well, let's take a look at it on the holograph projector. The professor slotted a computer disk into his control console. The general introduced each volunteer as three-dimensional figures appeared before their eyes. Now, boys and girls, turn the recording over. He's the leader, Jonathan Quick, former head of Federal Interplanetary Force 8. His hawk code name, Quicksilver. The professor clicked a switch, and two new images formed. Emily Hart and Will Hart, the twins, they're technicians, designers, and both strong as all get out. When one twin feels something, so does the other. Uh, their hot code names Steel Heart and Steel Will. The twins faded out as the professor switched to a new hologram. Here's a volunteer from the planet of the Mimes, a mathematical genius. He'll be known as the Copper Kid. The next image seemed to startle the professor. This can't be right. He looks like a cowboy. <laughs> that cowboy's a colonel, Professor, and the best pilot in the solar system. We'll call him Bluegrass. The professor nodded as the hologram show ended. I'm impressed, General. Hmm, it seems a shame we can't send them up to Commander Stargazer as they are. One day we'll be able to send an ordinary person 100 light years into space, General. But right now we can only send one who is partly metal and partly real. Well, have you completed their modifications? Uh, we're checking them now. A woman assistant entered. All the sensors are attached, Professor. We're ready. She joined the other two at the control console and turned several switches and dials. Command Silverhawk's check run. Drawings of an android figure appeared on the monitor screen. Shoulder jets. Operative. Arm jets. Affirmative. Heel jets. All in order. 
Talons? Yes. Wings? In perfect order. Left hands? Normal. Heads? Normal. Hearts? Lights flashed and an alarm sounded. Negative readout on the fourth and fifth hearts. What's happening, Professor? The twins. Ah, uh, it seems we have a problem with the real hearts, General. We'll have to fit mechanical ones. The General frowned. How will the twins operate without real hearts? <laughs> They'll be fine, General. Both men laughed. Now their code names really fit. Steel Heart and Steel Will. Perfect. Let's hope our Silverhawks live up to their promise. Um, we'll soon find out, General. Days later, the Silverhawks were ready for their final flight and combat tests. As their sleek craft zoomed down from the sky towards space headquarters, Bluegrass was at the controls. Silverhawks, stand by. He called. A space officer from another planet murmured, I hope your man can handle that machine. It's our latest fighter, the Mirage. Don't worry. Bluegrass can handle anything with wings. You'd better be right, General, because if you're not, our remote-controlled combat drone will find him out. After dipping its wings over headquarters, the Mirage soared steeply skyward. Bluegrass alerted his team in their launch pod. Silverhawks, sound off. One, two, sound off. Three. Four whistled. The Hawks pulled down their visors. Prepare to launch. Release. Quicksilver shot out of his pod. Release. Steelheart emerged next. Release. Steel Will followed his twin. Last came the Copper Kid. The Silverhawks plunged downward, Quicksilver in the lead. The voice of Bluegrass sounded from loudspeakers in the ship's hall. Silverhawks, wing it! One by one, the Hawks lowered and raised their arms, spreading their silver wings. Then they soared and touched hands, flying in line of breath. Pick them off! Bluegrass ordered. Quicksilver spiraled downward. So did Steelheart and Steel Will and the Copper Kid. Cluster! Came the order. The Silver Hawks zoomed toward each other and clasped hands in a circle formation. Below, the alien space officer jabbed a control button and a missile blasted off. The combat test was about to begin. Uh oh! Gasped Bluegrass. Scatter! The Hawks streaked apart as the remote controlled drone cut a fiery path between them. All four shot upward, their heel jets trailing plumes of vapor. Combat drone at three o'clock! The missile was homing in on them, but their rapid climbs evaded it. Now we'll see what your silver hawks are made of, said the space officer. At a flick of the controls, the drone maneuvered rapidly and rocketed upward in pursuit of the team. Its laser guns opened fire, but again, the silver hawks took evasive action. Dive! Cried Bluegrass. The hawks did so, and the drone passed overhead. Now, it attacked their mother craft, roaring head on toward the Mirage. Bluegrass held course, then rolled at the last instant. The two crafts streaked past, missing each other by inches. All right, let's show them the hot seat in action. Bluegrass chuckled as he pulled a lever. The cockpit canopy slid back, and the pilot's seat shot forward. It was a separate mini-jet fighter all by itself. Meanwhile, the drone was still attacking, but the super fighter seemed impervious to laser fire. Time to give the Mirage effect a look-see. Bluegrass flicked the switch. A beam of light flashed from the hot seat toward its mother ship. The Mirage shimmered brightly. Then faded into invisibility. I'm impressed, General. That's brand new stuff. First time it's been tried. As the space officer and others watched, the Silverhawks went into action. One after another, they blasted the drone with their suit lasers. Bluegrass nosed the hot seat into a dive. Then he zoomed upward from below, pumping bolt after bolt of laser fire into the drone's belly. Smoke billowed from the missile as it plunged toward the headquarters building. The observers scattered in alarm, but they were in no danger. 
the copper kid signaled his mates, and again they riddled the falling drone with laser fire. Bluegrass gave a final burst that blew it into fragments. The observers looked up in relief as the tiny pieces rained down harmlessly. The professor grinned proudly. Well, gentlemen, there they are, the Silverhawks. The space officer smiled approvingly as they landed. Congratulations, General, Professor. You've created a fine team. Why, thank you, sir. Would you care to meet the Silverhawks? An honor. Lieutenant Quicksilver. Fine job, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. May I present our twin sergeants, Steelheart and her brother, Steel Will. Put it there, pal. She shook hands. Oh, uh, sir. The space officer winced, and Steel Will apologized. Don't mind her. She doesn't know her own strength. Pleased to know you, sir. Quicksilver added. I'd like you to meet the Copper Kid, sir, from the planet of the Mimes. The kid whistled. Fine, uh, and you? And Colonel Bluegrass, our pilot. Howdy, uh, sir. Congratulations, young man. Some fine sure. Oh, shucks. That weren't nothing, sir. You just wait till I get the hang of it. Your silver hawks have done you proud, gentlemen. Let's just hope they impress Monstar and his mob as much as they have you, sir. The general added. Professor, you've outdone yourself. When is blastoff for Limbo? Tomorrow morning, General. 0800. Very well, then. Good flying, Silver Hawks. Hi, boys and girls. I'm your Peter Pan storyteller. When you hear this sound, turn the page. Silverhawks, The Origin, Part 2. The booster rocket was on its pad, but the Mirage was not yet ready. Blast off in 30 minutes and counting. Mirage in position, please. Mission control repeated. Mirage in position, please. The copper kid whistled urgently at Bluegrass. Yeah, I know, kid. He was fussing with the autopilot. Give me just one more darn minute here and I'll have it fixed. Uh, hand me my axe, will you? Steelheart brought his high-tech guitar. Looking for this, cowboy? Thank you, ma'am. Quicksilver hurried up with Steel Will. Hey, what's going on? The Mirage should be on board now. Just one more wire, Quicksilver, old buddy. Right here. You tampering with that autopilot, Tex? Bluegrass is the name. Music's the game. He pointed. This little button here starts the rhythm. This little button adds the bass. And this little button is gonna fly the mirage while I'm adding a few sounds. And that's Hot Licks. Say howdy to the folks. As the autopilot gave off musical rips, Quicksilver cut in. Come on, stop fooling around. We're late. Bluegrass chuckled. Almost human, ain't he? Time to get your act and your axe in the plane, Jack. I'll hook this thing back up. Quicksilver said. Here, let me help you with that. It must weigh a ton. Heck, Lieutenant, did it take more than a ton to phase my sis? Between them, Steelheart and Steel Will soon had hot licks back in the plane, and the Mirage itself in position atop the booster rocket. In minutes, they were blasting off for the galaxy of Limbo. The Silverhawks nestled in their pods as the expedition roared skyward. Bluegrass fed course data into the control. Zero, nine, or zero. Trajectory ZKKB. Velocity one, one, mega four. Limbo, here we come. Beyond Earth's atmosphere, Bluegrass prepared for the final propulsion maneuver. Booster jettison minus five, four, three, two, one, zero. Jettison. He pulled a lever, and the booster fell away in a burst of flame. The Mirage was now racing through space toward the galaxy of Limbo. Bluegrass reached for his guitar and switched on the rhythm unit. Talk to me, Hot Licks. You give me a little rhythm, I'll give you a lot of blues. After light years of travel through the starry universe, the Voyagers glimpsed a distant space station. It was perched on a rocky asteroid and topped by the grim steel likeness of a hawk. Quicksilver spoke to his teammates. That must be it. Hawk Haven, 
home for the next few centuries. The copper kid whistled. Well, sis, I guess the cowboy gave us a pretty good ride. Just so long as he sits out a set to land this thing. Bluegrass announced. 90 seconds to breakfast. Would you care to stretch your wings, Silverhawks? They lowered their visors and zipped out of their pods in formation. Massive steel doors opened to admit them to the space station. The Silverhawks flew in, followed by the Mirage, and found themselves in a vast hangar. Stargazer's voice boomed from a loudspeaker. I'd like to welcome you to Hawkhaven, Silverhawks. They looked around as he added, Now you enter the door in the north wall. Copper Kid pointed the way. An elevator was waiting. They boarded it and were whisked up to the station's command center. The vast room seemed empty. They looked around uncertainly, and Quicksilver asked, Is that you, Commander Stargazer? Sliding doors opened in a central control console. Entering, they found themselves facing another door labeled Commander Stargazer, Private. Well, come in. They did so. The tough-looking station boss greeted them. You're Quicksilver, right? Yes, sir. That's right. Oh, can they, sir, stop, Lieutenant? We're going to be working together too closely for all that. Right. Let me introduce... No offense, Quicksilver, but let's make the intro short. You're Steelheart, right? And you must be our little brother, Steel Will, right? You got it. Put it there, Commander. Forget it. I've read your file. Yes, you're the Copper Kid. The answer was a whistle. From the planet of the Mimes, huh? <laughs> Never been there myself. Stargazer turned. Colonel Bluegrass, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, young for a colonel. <laughs> oh, shucks. Just naturally talented, Commander. Stargazer looked them over. Oh, you're the latest models, huh? His telescopic eye examined them closely. Oh, pretty slick. Been promising myself a trip back to Chicago. Get refitted, couple of laughs with the old crowd. He sighed regretfully. But that blasted Monstars put an end to all that. Sure. Yes, uh, what's the current status, Commander? Asked Quicksilver. Well, here's the situation. Stargazer jabbed a desk button. Bookshelves slid back to reveal a space monitor screen. That planet's the Brimstar, he explained. And right at the bottom of that star-shaped crater is the mob's headquarters, Monstar's fortress. That darn thing's just about indestructible. At that very moment, a green-skinned, worm-like alien was arriving at the gang stronghold by space taxi. Boss, boss, it's me. Yes, man. Come in, yes, man. They're here, boss. The Silverhawks are here. Monstar chuckled. Then we must welcome them, yes, man. Right. Yes, boss. Certainly, boss. Anything you say, boss. Yes, man. The transformation chamber. Yes, boss. As the gang leader ascended a throne-like enclosure, <laughs> yes, man scurried toward the fortress's control panel. He threw a lever, and rocket motors flamed, causing the entire Brimstar to turn. Yes Man gauged the turn so that the red-hot rays of the Moonstar blazed down directly through the crater and fell with burning brilliance on his hideous master. Moonstar of Limbo! The gang leader chanted, Give me the might, the muscle, the menace of Moonstar! In moments, the transformation was complete. Monstar had once more become an armored super demon, the terror of the galaxy. His star-shaped eye beamed a ray of power at Skyrunner, turning the space squid into a fiery spacecraft. Monstar climbed aboard. Call the boys together, yes man. Prepare all the weapons and load up the space limos. We'll make a direct attack on the Hawk Haven. Meanwhile, a fierce-looking hawk streaked in through the window of Stargazer's office. Take cover, cried Quicksilver. But the bird alighted on Stargazer's wrist. Relax, guys. 
Meet Tally Hawk. They eyed it cautiously. That's some bird, Commander. A robot? No, sir. He's partly metal, partly real. Just like you guys. Does he do anything else besides looking mean enough to chew nails off a fence? Said Bluegrass. Tally Hawk screamed, and his eye flashed a picture on the monitor screen. It showed Monstar approaching on Sky Runner. Does that answer your question? He's a spy satellite, scout, interceptor. You control him with this panel. The commander ripped a control device from his arm and tossed it to Quicksilver. You'd better learn it fast, because it looks like we got company. Sure enough, the mob was closing in, led by Monstar. With him, in their three space limos and armed to the teeth, was his whole fearsome gang. Monstar fired a burst from his laser lance, which exploded against the dome of Hawkhaven. Then he roared with maniacal laughter. Come on and fight, Yellow Hawks! The enemy bore down on Hawkhaven. Monstar led them aboard Skyrunner. With him were the rest of the gang in their battle limos. Melodia rode one called the Limbo Limo, with Yes Man to wheel, and Buzzsaw on the running board. Molecular was in another limo called the Roadstar, driven by Mumbo Jumbo. Windjammer rode the Zoom with hardware grinding. The attack was underway. Buzzsaw fired saw disc at the Hawk's head. Quicksilver launched Tally Hawk from inside the station. Its metal wings sliced through the spinning disc. Buzzsaw fired one at the bird, but it shattered this with its feet. Call him back. The green button. Quicksilver obeyed the commander's order, and Tally Hawk returned to Hawk Haven. Quicksilver held out his wrist for the bird and said, Looks like we're going to see some action. Ready to fly, Colonel? Ready as a rooster in a hen house. Then, let's go. Stargazer growled. Wanna leave that toy behind, Colonel Bluegrass? You ever seen a toy like this? Bluegrass aimed his guitar at the laser-proof dome and twanged some chords. The laser pulses crashed and exploded in an outburst of musical fireworks. What was that, Sheriff? Gasped Steelheart. E-flat, lady. E-flat major. As they prepared to engage the enemy, the Zoomer screamed in toward Hawk Haven. Windjammer brandished his tuning fork. Galactic storms destroy the Silver Hawks! Lightning bolts sizzled and flashed at the space station. The enemy fire was already melting holes in its outer surface. Suddenly, Hawk Haven's steel doors opened and the mirage zoomed out. Monstar greeted it with a thunderbolt from his laser lance, but the mirage rocketed upward and dodged the fiery missile. Yes Man drove his space limo up close to the Skyrunner and shouted at Monstar. You did it, boss! You did it! They're running! The gang leader snarled. Don't be too sure, Yes Man. Yes, boss. <laughs> no, boss. Now, boys and girls, turn the recording over. The attack continued as the mob blasted Hawk Haven with laser fire, thunderbolt, and force fields. Bluegrass signaled the Silver Hawks. Prepare to launch! One by one, they shot out of their pods. Release! 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 Visors down, they streaked toward the enemy in line abreast. Wing it! Ordered Quicksilver, and they spread their wings. They clasped hands in circle formation. Tallyhawk joined them with a fierce scream as they zoomed toward Monstar. Suddenly, their shoulder lasers opened fire. The beam smashed into Monstar, sending him and the Sky Runner reeling back. With a roar, he fired his laser lance at the oncoming Silverhawk. Scatter! cried Quicksilver. Tallyhawk's eyes shot fiery beams at Monstar. The blast knocked him out of Skyrunner and sent him cartwheeling through space. 
Skyrunner climbed breathing fire. At the same time, Quicksilver slowed, using his wings as air brakes, and blasted Monstar with his shoulder lasers. The super criminal dodged by a thrust from his elbow jets. Meanwhile, Tallyhawk and the Skyrunner were charging at each other in a head-on duel of firepower. They collided with a brilliant explosion, then rebounded and tumbled out of control, billowing smoke. Steelheart and Steel Will were attacking the Roadstar. Under the shock of their laser beams, Mumbo Jumbo and Molecular were thrown out as the limo rocked and veered away. Copper Kid blasted the Zoomer. It shot upward, but the Kid pursued it and fired again. Windjammer and Hardware were dumped from their seats. As the battle raged, Melodia and Yes Man pursued the Mirage. Faster, Yes Man! Faster! We'll give them the big crescendo! Yes, Melodia! Certainly, Melodia! Gradually, they closed in on the Super Fighter. Melodia swung her synthesizer keyboard into firing position. They will never forget this concert! She shrieked with wild laughter as the Mirage rocked under the impact of her deadly music. Bluegrass gritted. You want a jam, lady? We'll jam! He switched on the ship's autopilot. Let's join the party, hot licks! Just then, the Mirage shook from another blast of Melodia's laser notes. Bluegrass pulled a lever, and the hot seat separated from its mother ship. You did it, Melodia. He's bailing out. Again, she shrieked with laughter. We tuned them out. Another burst of laser notes struck the Super Fighter. Bluegrass switched on the Mirage effect. Now you see it. Now you don't. The Mirage shimmered and disappeared. You got it, Melodia. Blasted it right out of the sky. Now for the pilot, yes, man. Yes, Melodia, whatever you say. Yes, yes. The Limbo Limo circled around an asteroid and climbed to attack the hot seat. But Bluegrass did his own circling maneuver and came at his attacker head on. What a session, he gloated. Melodia aimed her synthesizer and sounded off a jangling blast of laser notes. You are out of tune, lady, said Bluegrass. He fired back with his guitar. The laser music clashed and exploded in violent discord. The limbo limo reeled from the shockwave and plunged downward. Bluegrass thumbed up a goodbye. Well, that's the end of that song. One after another. The mob's three limos crash-landed on Hawkhaven. Steelheart, Steel Will, and the Copper Kid followed in hot pursuit. Buzzsaw had bounced clear of the limbo limo. He shot a saw blade up at Bluegrass. The spinning disc sliced through the metal skin of the hot seat. But Bluegrass was unharmed. He slammed back a sizzling chord from his guitar. The laser beam hit Buzzsaw and totally stunned him. Looks like the party's over, chuckled Bluegrass. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Sky Runner was tumbling toward Hawkhaven. Only a spurt of its jets prevented a crash. Tallyhawk 2 pulled out of its plunge in the nick of time. Beams of fire shot from its eyes and struck sparks from Sky Runner's armor. The Copper Kid had somersaulted upright on Hawkhaven, just in time to face a deadly attack by Windjammer. The wild-eyed crook slammed down his tuning fork, vibing out lightning and thunder. The Kid shot back a blast from his arm laser that sent Windjammer reeling off balance. At that moment, Quicksilver was chasing Monstar, who suddenly wheeled about. The light star flashed from his eye and rocketed toward Quicksilver. The Copper Kid whistled a warning. Quicksilver reacted fast, spinning, diving, twisting, turning. But the light star followed every move. The super crook roared with laughter. No one escapes, Monstar! Mumbo Jumbo had jumped free when the road star crashed. Now he turned to face Steelheart. Mumbling and bellowing in fury, 
She mocked him with a bullfighter's pose. Whatever you say. With a roar of rage, he charged at her. But she grabbed his horns and vaulted onto his back. Steel Will somersaulted up behind her. Don't mean to horn in on your axis, but maybe we should give him the old heave-ho. Let's do it. They leaped down and grabbed the bull-like crook by the legs, then swung him back and forth. Heave! Ho! They flung him into space and slapped him. All right, cousins. Watch your tail, Hotshot. Steelheart called back as Bluegrass streaked past. The Limbo Limbo was close behind. Bluegrass did a quick roll and dive, almost grazing the space station. Yes Man wasn't that good a pilot, and scraped the limo to a pancake halt. Steelheart lifted its rear end and dumped out Melodia and Yes Man. Melodia tried to blast her with laser notes, but Steel Will swept his sister out of the way. Bluegrass circled and fired at Melodia. She dived for cover behind the Limbo Limo, but his cord smashed into the spacecraft, rolling it over. Meanwhile, Windjammer vibed another blaze of lightning at the Copper Kid. The Kid whipped out two force field frisbees and hurled them at Windjammer. He screeched and staggered back, stunned by their impact. The Frisbees returned to their master, who was about to hurl them again, but the crook panicked. Lightning! Take Windhammer! A flash of lightning streaked down, wrapped itself around Windjammer, and pulled him up into the sky. Copper Kid didn't see Molecular approaching behind him, disguised as Bluegrass. Give me a hand, Kid! Luckily, the real Bluegrass was watching. Now that ain't playing fair! He whirled his lariat, dropped it neatly over the crook's neck, and whisked him up into the air. But the master of disguise changed into a cloud of vapor and disappeared. The copper kid whistled thanks and gave a thumbs up. Quicksilver was still diving, twisting, and turning, pursued by the Light Star and Monstar. Quicksilver pressed a button in the side of one knuckle, and a cloud of dense, fogging smoke billowed out behind him. Monstar and his fireball were soon lost in the darkness. The gang leader roared in baffled fury, Monstar will find you! You cannot hide! Quicksilver glided down to join his teammates. They all fired their weapons at the enemy. Bluegrass smashed cords into the smoke. Copper Kid hurled his frisbees, and the twins fired their lasers. Tally Hawk! shouted Quicksilver, and a hawk scream answered. The lieutenant thumbed his control device. Tally Hawk swooped down, firing beams from his eyes into the smoke, then alighted on Quicksilver's wrist. By now, Monstar was in full retreat aboard Skyrunner. to Brimstar! As the Silver Hawks watched, the Super Crook and his mob disappeared in the distance. Bluegrass looked at Quicksilver. Hot pursuit? Save it. We'll get to know the territory first. All right, you're the boss. Heck, Lieutenant, I was just getting warmed up, said Steel Will. Well, little Will, tomorrow's another day. Maybe we'll see some real action. Roll on tomorrow. Bluegrass punched a button on Hot Seat to reverse the Mirage effect, then spoke to the autopilot. Bring her on down, Hot Licks, and give me a little something on the way. As bass and drum rhythms sounded to back up the Colonel's guitar, the mothership flew down and landed nearby. The Silverhawks turned as Commander Stargazer approached sardonically. Nice try, Silverhawks. Nice try, retorted Steelheart. That's a hard man. Oh, you're all heart, Commander. He's right, said Quicksilver. Monstar and his mob are still loose, and the universe won't be safe until we get them back behind bars. Tallyhawk screamed and winged off as Stargazer laughed. You've got your work cut out for you. He saluted. Welcome to Limbo. 
Silverhawks.